This is Rukia. Rukia comes from a very small village called Bikamkur in rural India. Now, I met Rukia two years ago on one small blue carpet in a small blue house called the Saheli Center, which means girlfriend club in Hindi. I remember the day she walked in and she had this tiny piece of paper and she looked with the most enthusiastic eyes at all of us sitting on this carpet and told us, this is my new business venture. So we were really excited what to, to hear what it was. And on the drawing was a cow. But she made sure to tell every single one of us that it was not just a cow, it was a golden cow. Now I'm from Holland and I've seen quite a lot of cows in my life but I've never ever seen a golden cow before. But when Rukia was explaining me more about her cow, I kind of understood why it was actually really gold. Because this was her ticket to financial independence. It was her ticket to equality. And it was a way to feed her family for the next 10 years. Now with the help of a small NGO, she got the microcredit to enable her to buy the cow. But I'm not here today as an NGO. I'm here as a fashion designer. And it was through becoming a fashion designer that I learned how to unify the two most opposite parallels, which on one hand is sustainable development, which is all about building something up, which is about making sure that we have a good world to leave to our children one day, which is about the avoidance of the natural depletion of, of, of our resources. And on the other hand, there's fashion, cute outfits, cute bags, but also the second biggest polluting industry worldwide, and we're all wearing it every single day. And it was these two worlds that came together on one carpet, through meeting one woman called Madhu, the owner of the NGO, who truly inspired me how to unify these two opposite parallels in one direction. Now we all know what fashion should mean right now, it's never been more clear in 2018 that we need to start thinking about what we are wearing on a daily basis. We, need to, we know that we need to produce in an ethical way and use the right raw materials. But what I want to inspire you to do today is think about what fashion could mean. How can we use the, biggest wor the, the second biggest polluting industry worldwide to actually facilitate change? This is what we're trying to avoid. I took this picture in Mumbai two years ago in a small slum, and I knew that if I wanted to create change, I had to produce in a different way. So the way we produce and with who we produce. Find your treasure and find your madhu. Because in 2030, which is the same year as UN, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are there, we will also be with 8.5 billion people consuming an amount of apparel of 500 billion t-shirts. Now that is really abstract, but to concretize it, it means that you will buy 40 t-shirts per person per year. Now right now, as young entrepreneurs and as consumers, we need to look at ways how to make these 40 t-shirts per person per year into 40 golden cows. Find your treasure. This was me also two years ago at a local landfill in India. And if we're looking right now at the annual amount of waste that we as humans uh, produce, it's 2.1 billion tons. Now this is a lot. And we all know on a consumer-based level, we need to buy less, we need to recycle, look at grandma's closet, look at your friend's closet, do clothing swap parties. But if we actually look at this from an entrepreneur entrepreneurial kind of perspective, and looking at the fashion supply chain, there's an immense amount of opportunity. Because if you look at the production process, starting at the first three steps, we already waste 30% of textile. Then in the end, end of use product, we only recycle 20% of that. Now to any environmentalist, this is a complete dramatic scenario. But for an entrepreneur, this could be an opportunity. This could be and mean a way how to turn a systematic failure into a systematic opportunity. Now I'm going to show you a few ways how small and bigger companies decided to do this, which is one of them is using old refugee boats and turning them into back 
Berlin. And a second one is fishnets or plastic bottles or anything that we can find in the ocean and turning them into bathing suits. Now for me, I believe that in order to really catalyze change, we need to be able to identify with a problem. Because when I say plastic bottles, that doesn't necessarily do something to me. Because if there is no identification process, there is no empathy. And if there is no empathy, there is no change. And for the next exercise, I want you to close your eyes and stand in front of your closets. And think about what you would give to your future babies or already existing ones. And now open up your eyes again. Now for me, I found this answer in my closet. I used these 20% of what we actually recycled and turned them into 20% that I used from the global market of the beauty that is already there in this world. And um, this inspired me to look at ways how to really cl truly close the fashion value chain and use a circular economy to make new garments. Now, all of us know, okay, we need to recycle, we need to look at whatever the world already has and make new interesting products out of it. And this is really interesting, but when it becomes more interesting is to find ways how to actually contribute. And for me, the answer came with a woman called Madhu. And I met Madhu two years ago in the Blue City in Jodhpur. And she was one of the most inspiring women that I've, that I've ever met in my whole life. She grew up in the Blue City and went back to the small village called Bikramkor to see if her, mm, for a wedding of her, of her, of her uh, husband's family. And she saw the state of the women, but knew she had to catalyze the same thing that she was able to do in the Blue City. So within two years, she learned English and she got accepted to a renowned American university that told her, okay, we love your idea and we really want to help you catalyze change in this village, so we will give you two students. Now, this is a typical setup of an NGO. But when it becomes actually interesting, if you turn an NGO into a social enterprise, because when she started out her project and she was sitting on this carpet with the women and teaching them about menstrual hygiene and women's rights and human rights, the women in the village told her, why do we love this idea? But if we cannot earn money, we cannot implement your ideas. And she found out a little after that every single woman in this village owned a sewing machine. And we started giving them skill training. And through this, her social enterprise that wanted to create a better future on a small scale turned into a successful business. Now, by partnering up with women like Madhu and recycling textiles, we actually can create products that contribute to the sustainability goals. Because these are the 17 sustainability goals set by the United Nations in 2030. And just one dress made from recycled textiles and working with a woman like Madhu and her village crosses off 15 of the 17 sustainable development goals. So I want to achieve by telling you this story, telling the story of Madhu and reevaluating our global waste, redefining it, reimagining it, and transforming it into what could be the answer to facilitate a better future for these babies that we're thinking about in these closets. Thank you. <laughs>